All right, for the final uh, lecture in the filtration series is we're going to do membrane filtration. And this is for bottling only. This is the end of the line, the last thing we do. And generally, any other type of filtration is taking place beforehand. So this is just on the way to the bottom. So these are a screen filter. They are uh, meant completely to just catch anything that's contaminated upstream. And the reality is, when we're bottling, we've hopefully nominally sterile filtered, we've cleaned our tanks really well, we've cleaned our lines really well, so that there's very little material that's gonna have to get caught. There's very little yeast, very little bacteria, very little detritus, um, and hopefully we're using this only as a, uh, a, a final step to make sure that there's nothing getting through. But one of the interesting things about this is once you do have your you know, lines and everything totally sterile or all your wine sterile and everything like that. You don't really have to worry all that much because that membrane, if you've done a good job filtering beforehand, is going to catch everything. Um, so it's kind of interesting that, you know, when you're cleaning your valves and things like that, that if something were to get into the line, you've got that level of protection, that last piece that would make sure that if a fruit fly got in the line, it would never make it to the bottle. Uh, or any of the bacteria that would be on that fruit fly or something were to crawl on a valve right as you're hooking it up. Uh, and that's a nice thing to know. Uh, it does give you a good peace of mind because there's, uh, if, the, if, if set up properly and everything works properly, uh, there's little to no chance you're going to have any contamination in bottle. But with membranes, we are looking at really, really tight filtration. We're looking at making sure we're keeping out just microorganisms. In this case, uh, that 0.46 microns is a little bit smaller than uh, Pediococcus, which can clock in at about 0.6 microns. So we're looking at really, really tight uh, filtration from a, a microbiological standpoint. Again, this is a single pass membrane. They will clog, they clog very easily. These do not handle dirt. I'll repeat that, this is not a way to filter a wine in any way that you're trying to reduce the amount of microorganisms. You're just trying to use it as a last measure of protection. So these are typical sanitary membranes. This is the way they look. You can read this as quick as I can. Basically plastic on the outside, pleated paper on the inside. Um, and then there's different codes. Uh, most wineries use code seven, but it's important to know which one you have because that's what kind you need to buy. Uh, no one told me that when I got in the wine industry and I didn't know what to buy. I called up and I said, I need membrane filters. And the guy's like, what kind? I'm like, huh? So, uh, we know ours is code seven, but just find out, uh, what they are. And I have no idea why, what happened to like four and five and six. I don't know what code four, five and six happened to them. They're, they just not out there. I guess they're old and obsolete, but, um, why do we have to code three to code seven and eight? I don't know. Um, again, this is just a pack of uh, polypropylene, basically paper, uh, and uh, they're just packed in there and it makes sure that the wine passes straight through it. If you uh, want to do a really good job and steam these heavily, some of the membranes come with stale, stainless steel rings on the end of them to make sure they don't deform uh, during the steaming process, because most of the time you're going to be steaming these before you use them. I want to talk a little bit about differential pressure. This is the pressure between the upside and downside of a stream that's uh, filtered in use. We call this uh, the differential pressure or delta P. Um, and this is what we want to look at before a filter has collected any contaminant. So the uh, reason we want to look at this is, is that if we're running just water through a membrane filter, completely clean, sterile water, there should be uh, no difference in the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure. If there is, that means that membrane is already clogging up. So, um, and we wanna just note that differential pressure between what's going into the, 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 the filter and what's coming out of the filter. The reason why that is, is that say you're bottling sparkling wine and the wine's under pressure, both gauges are gonna read the same. So what we wanna do is see the difference in pressure of up versus down. So if we have no pressure on the down, the exit stream, but we have lots of pressure on the input stream, then we know that we have something clogging the pores in between. And so most membranes flow uh, from the outside through to the in. 
um, and this is how they flow. So make sure that when you're hooking your membrane up, you're doing it so the outside of the filter is where the wine is going, and then most of it's uh, coming out through the bottom. Again, um, single pass membranes are designed to catch everything. Uh, if there's a hole in the filter or the gaskets are worn, bacteria can slip by. And so we need to be able to test a filter to guarantee its integrity. We call this integrity testing. Uh, we want to test its proficiency. We need to know if that filter is in good shape. So the way we can integrity test, there's a couple of ways. Uh, destructive, which is uh, kind of pointless uh, because if you destroy your membrane and you send some bacteria or partic particles through it, um, and to see how many get caught, well, then you're going to clog the filter and it's kind of useless. The only reason time you would do destructive testing is if you're doing quality control in the filter manufacturing uh, houses. Whereas non-destructive testing, we have forward flow, bubble point, and pressure hold. But 99% of the time, people do bubble points. Um, we have bubble pointed a few times uh, during our hand bottlings. And the only time you bevel point is on a membrane uh, uh, just to check to see if it is uh, got good integrity. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. And the idea is, is that these pores are so small that the surface tension on the water takes quite a bit of pressure to pop it. And so what we want to do is fill up the, the filter with water, and then we just start adding air and pu pushing it out and then we want to see that pressure come up. Typically on a membrane filter, it's somewhere between 20 and 40 PSI uh, of nitrogen it would take to pop that little bubble. But depending on the pore size, so like maybe a 0.65 micron would pop at like 20 PSI, whereas a 0.45 micron would pop at uh, maybe 30 to 40 PSI. And then some people do all the way down to 0.2 microns uh, in some really tightly filtered German Rieslings. Uh, and in those cases, they could be 40 to you know 50 PSI to get that wetted pore to pop. So uh, the, the tighter the, the um, membrane, the more pressure it's going to take to pop because that size of that pore gets smaller and smaller. And so the bubble point is when that actually pushes through. So what we do is we keep bringing pressure up, pressure up, pressure up, watching the tank or the filler bowl, looking for bubbles, and then we just watch and watch and watch, or you can even listen, and you can see the pressure hold and pressure hold, and, and then you would read the manufacturer's instructions of how high the bubble point should be. And once you get to that point, you check. If there's no bubbles, you've got membrane integrity, and you can go ahead and blow it. But you can keep winding it up to find out uh, until you blow it through. And you always want to do that because you want to blow all the water out of the wine system anyway. You want to get all that water out so that you can go ahead and go to wine. Uh, here's some math for you. Uh, I don't think we're going to go over that too much further, but for those that want to uh, look it up, go right ahead. Um, and again, uh, this is the bubble point, and it's inversely proportional to the diameter of the pore. So that means small pores have higher bubble point pressures, which is what I just talked about. So this is how you do it. Basically, you fill everything up with water, you start pumping air through it, and then wait till bubbles come out the other side. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Uh, it was something I was, uh, again, when I got into the industry, I'd never done before and was all worried about it. And then somebody showed me how to do it. And I was like, wow, that's it. That's easy. So uh, don't overthink it. Okay, what filter would we use for every application? This is what you might want to go look at if you are going to be doing any of these particular operations. So for lees and juice, um, flotation, we'll talk a little bit more about flotation. Uh, centrifuges, RDVs, uh, some sort of diatomaceous earth filter for lees, plate and frame. Juice, you can do a lot of different things. So for juice clarification, um, again, we can do different types of filters. Coarse wine uh, clarification, uh, we've got some good ones. But then once we start getting down to the nominal sterile filtration, you know, good old uh, DE filters, um, plate and frame filters and cross flows are really the two uh, most common. Uh, then sterile at bottling, that is strictly for membrane filtration. And then if you're going to do some sort of concentration or removal of taints or uh, acid adjustments, that's what ultra nanofiltration is for. 
Um, and so these are all the different types of filtration. There are, it's a really broad uh, topic and it's, a, it's one of the most powerful tools for fixing your wine. And that's one of the things I really like about filtration is that, um, is that you can uh, really modify your wine and change the way it tastes uh, for the better in most cases. So let's do a quick review. What's the difference between a plate, a depth filter and a screen filter? So a depth filter is something that traps things inside of it, whereas a screen filter catches things on top of it. Depth filters have a lot more dirt holding capacity than a screen filter. So a depth filter, a winemaker would use for clarifying lees or coarse wine fil filtration, whereas a screen filter is a membrane filter. And a screen filter is that final membrane pass where you're screening out absolutely everything. But because it's a screen, it doesn't have a lot of dirt holding capacity. So how do each of these filters work? You might want to draw schematics of the working parts. Um, and why would a winemaker use an RDV filter? And that's to save lees. Um, I think they're going by the wayside. So uh, high solids cross flows are going to take that, uh, that over. So think about advantages and disadvantages of each of these filter types. And then <clears throat> maybe I might ask you in a quiz or something, to draw a production diagram of, of what you would use when um, and where you might use them in different processes. Uh, and that could be very useful. So that's it for filtration.